Okay, Addis Max, I'm going to say this is the last of my Kai Weeks videos, and it will be for a long time because they don't have any other products that I care for and I'm interested in. This is a free promotional product. I do appreciate them sending it to me, but I don't take payment. I've only ever had three payments. One was for a charger and a couple times with the through night flashlights, which I think the company didn't like because they ended up firing the sales rep that I was working with, I think because he approved a couple of $100 payments. Otherwise, I've never, I mean, I don't have an Amazon affiliate program. I've never made a dime off any of the links. So I take the free stuff because I have the money to spend for it. And if I think it's cool, it's cool. If I don't think it's cool, I end up donating it and telling you all about it. This is on sale for 35 bucks, normally 50. Actually, a while ago, I mean, these companies have these EMF meters. Who knows how they're calibrated? They have a widely varying amount of sensitivity and readings from one another. And that's the biggest issue is some standardization. I will compare to another free promo one, which is Eric Hill, which ended up becoming the number one bestseller in Amazon is the Eric Hill EMF meters. And I have the premium ERO2 here. So we'll be comparing the Kai Weeds to it. What these are is their EMF meters. They read all three at the same time, but some only display one. This displays all three, and it has this wave. The idea is, you know, if you're experiencing issues of radio interference, you know, this will uh, detect RF frequencies up to 3.5 gigahertz. This Eric Hill will go up to 10 gigahertz. This can do five detect 5G signals. This won't quite do that. It is a cheaper model. I think the Eric Hills norm. This is normally 80 bucks. You know, other differences on a more expensive one. Is so obviously this is just a full true dot matrix screen, and we are in RF. And interestingly enough, you know, we're getting readings on this, where this is more attenuated, but this may have better filtering. Now, if we do something like get near the this power cord here. Actually, it drops way down on both of them. So let's go to our um, electric field. There we go. This all measures all three at the same time, but that it, once again, when you change the modes, it's just rotating these things around so you have the bigger display on whatever you're after. And on this Eric Hill, if we put it next to it, we can definitely see it's going way up there, 83. Oddly enough, this Kai Wheats, there we go, we're getting I mean we're getting 153 on this unit on the Eric Hill volts a meter and I'm getting you know 30s on the Kai Wheats. And you can see when it starts getting high the screen color changes. So uh, there we go. Now we're getting about the same reading, but they have to be just about um, and it may be just a slight difference that there's more case or the sensor isn't as close to the edge of the case it is on this as it is on this. Otherwise, that's kind of the, the best thing to use them for is for detecting voltages just because uh, they're really sensitive and they are good non-contact voltmeters. They will uh, detect magnetic fields here. It detects AC magnetic fields. It'll detect permanent magnets, but you have to wave them back and forth to induce a voltage. Uh, one thing I find a little bit annoying is difference in um, units. This reads in Teslas, or this reads in MG, whatever that is. MG is not a standard unit. Tesla is, and so that's a little bit annoying. Um, and when you have power, so this is the power cord that my computer's plugged into, so it has a few hundred watts going through it it will be generating more of a magnetic field. Amazon's useless Alexa Plus. It's going to fall flat on its face because it just... Huh, it's a terrible AI. It just doesn't offer anything. can't write papers for you and solve math problems. It's just better at answering some questions. Anyway, so that's the other issue with this is using non-standard units. Surprisingly enough, these things are more common and cheaper these days, but Man, back in the days of CRT computer monitors, I uh, remember people going around business, you know, worked for a company that paid some big, big money for somebody to come around with one of these 
you know, units because some people's offices, the, the CRT monitors would have the sh shaking and they'd use one of these to go around and figure out, you know, where the field was coming from. And it turned out that it was a, um, there's some big power going through the ceilings of the, some of these offices, uh, some building distribution power and the conduit had just didn't have good enough grounding. But they were able to, you know, go around and say, okay, it's definitely a field that's coming from the ceiling area. Here is one reason to get a more premium unit because of the graphing mode here. It's actually kind of a neat function because it makes it really obvious how close or how far away you are getting to something through a comparative bar graph. So that's my little video about this unit. It seems like a, an, an okay unit for the price, but I don't like that it has non-standard magnetic field units. I don't think it has quite as good of filtering algorithms uh, as the more expensive units do. And it's not good enough for you to like detect, you know, wireless, you know, spy microphones and that type of stuff. You need a portable spectrum analyzer uh, to get the kind of sensitivity and a better antenna for that kind of stuff. So these things are always kind of, they're really just kind of gimmicky unless you have specific needs like troubleshooting radio interference issues, trying to figure out why some machines or Wi-Fi cameras, etc., don't want to connect where others are because you can go and see if maybe the signal is, you know, one type, one particular wall is really attenuating the signal. God, this boot is tight. And we'll finish it off. It's a kind of interesting. I think a big portion of these is the specific design of these antennas because those two plates are the antennas. One, that is the electric field sensor, which is a little bit bigger. And the RF sensor is a little bit smaller. And then the magnetic field is actually, I believe, these three inductors. If you notice, we have one that is vertical. One that is longitudinal and one that is transverse, and that's how it does the three axis magnetic field. Kind of an interesting mechanical way of doing it, and I assume these are like little signal processor circuits or something. Maybe somebody can tell me if I can zoom in. A lot of these Chinese companies will do this stuff where they grind off. Hello. I guess for anybody who's into it there, I finally got a closer look at the chips. There's three of the very same chip, and there's another one right there, which I'm also assuming is the same. And a tiny little lithium-ion battery. With how much space is in the back of this, they could have made this thing have a battery that would have lasted for weeks. And last but not least, it has like this Geiger counter mode. Anyway, they sent it to me for free, so I promised to make a video, and this is it. Anyway, thanks for watching.